For at least a year now, I've been telling myself that I would make shorter videos. However, I would always just end up choosing much larger projects, and then while I was editing it, I'd be wondering why it was already 20 minutes long. Finally though, I've committed to making some shorter ones, like this video, and there are a whole bunch of different topics that I do eventually want to cover, but to start things off, I've decided to go with something called manganese heptoxide. Manganese heptoxide is nothing new, and it's been known to exist since at least the mid-1800s. It's made by mixing two relatively common chemicals, where the first one is just concentrated sulfuric acid. I like to add a pipette full, which is about 2 milliliters, and then to sprinkle on a small amount of the second ingredient, which is potassium permanganate. The moment that they're mixed, the sulfuric acid reacts with the potassium permanganate to make permanganic acid. This acid is then dehydrated by the sulfuric acid, meaning a water is pulled off, and it forms an anhydride version. This new molecule is a combination of two permanganic acids, and it really doesn't want to exist. It's a really strong oxidizer, but it's also not very stable, so it basically looks for any reason to decompose. This can either be by reacting with something, or just spontaneously. For example, this was a different sample that I made using a lot more potassium permanganate, and all I did was touch it with a hot piece of metal. All of the green oil at the top was the manganese heptoxide, and you can see that almost immediately, it all reacted. However, when the amount of permanganate that's used is low, like I did for this first run, and when the temperature is below 55C, you don't have to worry too much about it spontaneously decomposing. It's only really when you add quite a bit of it, and you get all of that oil floating on the top. Regardless of that though, it is still very dangerous, and it has to be treated with respect. But anyway, now getting back to this sample, for the first test, I just dropped a cotton ball on it. The reaction was quite fast, and it also generated a lot of heat, so it almost immediately lit on fire. Most of the heptoxide either reacted or decomposed almost instantly though, so the violent part of the reaction didn't last very long. To quench this, I just added some water, which killed any remaining heptoxide and converted it back to the pinkish purple permanganic acid. There was also a bunch of brown stuff that appeared, which was all manganese dioxide. For the next run, I did it with a potato chip, and it was mostly the oil in it that reacted. This time though, for whatever reason, it let off a lot more manganese dioxide. I did it again from another angle, just to really show how much it was letting off. The chip didn't react nearly as much, but the effect was pretty much the same, which told me it was probably just the heptoxide decomposing. The manganese dioxide was initially a really fine dust, but once it was in the air for a bit, it started to form these small little pieces. They were still extremely light, but they were now too heavy to just float around in the air, so they all started falling back down. For the sake of the visuals, I turned off my fume hood for most runs, but I had to be really careful because breathing this stuff in wouldn't be very good to say the least. When I turned the hood back on though, you can see how they all kind of just switched directions and got pulled away. For the next run, I added a lot more permanganate, and there was a lot more heptoxide floating on the top. I assumed this would make the reaction even faster and more violent, so I threw on another cotton ball. However, it was actually more delayed, and I'm not entirely sure why. In general though, this heptoxide reaction seems to happen in two stages, where the first one is directly between the heptoxide and the cotton. This then generates enough heat to quickly decompose the rest of the heptoxide. And in doing so, it splits apart into manganese dioxide like I mentioned before, as well as a whole bunch of oxygen and ozone gas. Both of these gases are then able to immediately react with the already burning cotton and cause it to erupt in flames. The issue with this more concentrated run though, seems to be with the first part. The more pure heptoxide apparently just has trouble attacking and oxidizing the cotton on its own. In the other run, because I used less permanganate, there was more sulfuric acid present, and I think it helped in some way. Sulfuric acid reacts quite easily with cotton, and I think that maybe it helps speed up its reaction with the heptoxide. However, this is all of course, just speculation on my part. I tried this again using 1 gram of permanganate, and the same thing happened. 
It just kind of sat there for a while and then suddenly popped. The hypoxide in the dish did continue to decompose for a bit though, which I thought was cool. To test this delayed reaction further, I made more hyptoxide and I carefully pipetted some of it onto some paper towel. Concentrated sulfuric acid is easily able to tear apart paper towel in seconds and in doing so, it generates a lot of heat. However, nothing happened here which supported my idea that its concentration was just too low. I initially planned to just indefinitely wait for it to react, but I got impatient and I kept adding more hyptoxide. Eventually though, for whatever reason, it just went off and it was much more violent than any of the other runs. This was because what I had made was a sensitive mixture of a strong oxidizer and a fuel. So when it did decide to react, the entire section that was covered in the heptoxide did so almost instantly. Mixing an oxidizer and a fuel like this is the basic recipe for making an explosive which can obviously be very dangerous. Also, on top of this, unlike other explosive mixtures, the heptoxide ones are both super unstable and unpredictable. With cotton and paper, the reaction seems to be relatively tame, but with other fuels, things can get really violent and dangerous. For example, this guy did it with hexamine, which is commonly used as a camping fuel. It's also a precursor to C4, and I think that might be why he tried using it. In the end, he apparently wasn't injured, but I think that adding the heptoxide to fuel is just a recipe for disaster. It's just way too unpredictable, and personally, I don't really think it's worth the potential danger. So far, everything that I've been adding to it has been solid, but I wanted to try it with some liquids. Pretty much any flammable liquid should work, and for the first test, I just did it with acetone. Also, for all these runs, I'm doing the bit more concentrated version, so I'm using 1 gram of permanganate. The reaction was almost instant, and at 60 frames per second, it only lasted a few frames. For the next one, I did it with 95% ethanol, which was just another solvent that I had on hand. Unsurprisingly, this reaction was also extremely fast, but what I thought was the coolest part was when I slowed it down. I of course was still only able to get a few frames of the reaction, but I thought it kind of looked like a mini nuclear explosion. After playing around with this for a bit and seeing these solvents react and ignite the moment they touch the heptoxide, I started to think about the rocket video that I made. In that video, I talked about hypergolic combinations, which is where a fuel and an oxidizer spontaneously ignite on contact. That was exactly what was happening here, and I figured the next thing I'd want to try is aniline, which was an old rocket fuel. I really thought this reaction would be a lot more violent, but it seemed to be about the same as the others. However, the major difference was that I felt that it generated a lot more heat. Unfortunately though, after trying this, I ended up having to put the project on hold for a couple months. However, when I came back to it, something weird happened. I decided to redo the runs with adding solvent, and for some reason, the results were different. It was relatively tame before, but this time when I added the acetone, I was surprised by the difference. It was a much more violent reaction, and when I did it again, the same thing happened. The sound that each one made also surprised me because I didn't hear anything like that in any of the other ones. I then tried it with ethanol and it had a much higher pitched and more violent snap to it. I did this one a second time as well and it still had that nice snap to it. For the last try, I did it with aniline, and it wasn't as nearly as violent. Like before though, I could just feel that it generated a lot more heat. Because the aniline seemed to be relatively tame, I decided that I would try to fire it in the test tube like I did in my rocket video. So to a test tube, I carefully added some sulfuric acid, followed by a small amount of the permanganate. I figured it was better not to use the full gram like I did in my test runs and to do it a bit more dilute here. This was all thoroughly mixed around and then I added the aniline. It 
It seemed fine, and by that I mean it didn't explode, so I tried it with a narrowed neck. The reaction here was a lot more violent, and it was also pretty loud. The full impact of the sound though, just like in all the other runs, wasn't picked up super well by the mic. So a mixture of hyptoxide and sulfuric acid, and a fuel like aniline, could potentially work to fire a rocket, but there were just too many downsides to it. The major one is that the heptoxide is just way too sensitive, and if it's stored in a tank, it could just explode. The decomposition of the heptoxide might also be able to travel up any feed lines and make it back to the tank, which would again explode. Also, a huge portion of its mass is basically manganese dioxide, which doesn't really do much for the reaction. And not only is it just dead weight, it would probably also get stuck in the rocket engine and start building up, which could cause a bunch of other problems. But anyway, I think that's about it. Manganese heptoxide is definitely an interesting chemical, and I think it can sometimes be fun to play with, but it's also extremely dangerous. I really don't recommend anyone trying this out for themselves though, unless they have the proper setup to deal with it. Not only is it super reactive and explosive like we saw, it also shoots dangerous vapor and dust into the air that should definitely not be inhaled. Also, when you're done playing around with it, you're left with a bunch of manganese waste that has to be dealt with properly. This means that even after neutralizing it with water, it can't just simply be poured down the drain or dumped into the garbage. In my last video, you guys seemed to like that I showed how I dealt with my waste, so I've decided to do that again. This one has also been posted to my other channel, Niall Blue, and there's a link in the description. Oh, and also, I started working on making a ferrofluid again, and this time, I was actually successful. I am still working out a few kinks with the whole process though, so I'm not entirely sure when I'll be posting a video about it. There's a pretty decent chance that it could be as early as even the next video, but I don't really want to make any promises. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. Everyone who supports me can see my videos at least 24 hours before I post them to YouTube. Also, everyone on Patreon can directly message me, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end like you see here.